All right, man. Bud got his PR people running around here with their heads like chickens with the cut off. They trying to do this and that, trying to patch it up, trying to make good for the light because, you know, their meal ticket is gone. See, Bud has built his whole career off of other fighters, and now it's over with. I'm about to put his ass in the dirt, Earl. I'm glad you told me. They called him that the PDC didn't have the money. Showtime is going bankrupt. Oh, Paramount about to do this. Uh, so fucking what? Earl's not signed with Showtime. He signed with the PBC. Plus, Earl also has Fox in his back pocket. Fox will gladly put Earl on anything. They also bid it on the fight as well. Fox and Jerry Jones is in Earl's pocket. Earl don't need Showtime. Matter of fact, Jerry Jones was mad that Earl wasn't on Fox pay-per-view for the last fight with you, Ugas. And Jerry Jones represents a biggest corporation in modern sports. It's called the Dallas Cowboys. And Jerry Jones has the funds to fund this endeavor. Plus, Fox has a great relationship with him. Plus, they love working with Earl Spence. Plus, they have the venue there. No, the problem is Bud wanted to be a diva. I'm going to tell you this like this. They say he didn't have no guarantees. What fighter doesn't have no guarantees? No, they came to Bud with a contract with guarantees. More than what he made with that um, two million at BLK Prime, yes. That so-called 10 million that it turned out to be two million, but we ain't gonna talk about that, right? But yeah, they came to him with a contract, with a guarantee. He didn't want it. They got all the way up to 10 million guarantee. He didn't want it. He wanted to be a diva. He felt like he deserved more money. I'm not knocking a person on getting their money because boxing is a dangerous endeavor. It's not a sport that you play. When you boxing, you literally fighting for your life out there. People are paying to watch other people beat the person to death. So I'm not going to complain about that. But let's call it what it is, buddy. You didn't want it. And then you call yourself a boss. A boss this, a boss that. Earl gave you the chance to be a boss. When you have no guarantees, that means you are a boss. A boss has no guarantees. They eat what they kill. That's what Earl said. All the money was y'all's. If you have a guarantee, that means you have a promoter. That means he's guaranteeing your purse. That means he gets to catch the money coming back in before you do. But you and Earl was going to be the promoters and the fighters. That means you don't give yourself a guarantee because it's coming out of your expenses. So you don't have to pay yourself. You just get everything on the back end and y'all count it and divvy it up. If that's so hard for people to understand, when you got you a, a big ass biscuit and you putting it out there to your workers, you're not guaranteeing yourself. What you're doing is you coming back on the get go. That's what I'm saying. That's like you fronting somebody something. You are the boss. And if and the person gives you a guarantee, then he is your boss because he's fitting the bill and he's going to take the money off the top before it comes back. That's what people don't understand about being a boss. That's why people have so much short sightedness and short mind thinking. People don't understand the concepts. People are going to be workers for their whole life or middlemen. That's what he is, middlemen. And Terrence wanted to be a middleman while Errol tried to elevate him to a grander scheme, a higher spectrum of living. The man really didn't want to fight. He wanted to fight maybe before the Danny Garcia fight. After the Ugas fight, Terrence Crawford seen that Earl was not the same person. He seen he wasn't that drunk, careless Earl that was out here playing around the streets. And he seen that man was back on his shit. And he knew, and his team knew, Earl would destroy Bud. Bud has built a career of picking great opponents. If you look at all his fights, people say Bud takes time to learn. No, Bud be getting his ass kicked in every fight and then he overcomes them. Bud's always been at least 20 pounds heavier than everybody he fights against. When he fought against Gamboa, he was 20 pounds heavier. Bud was a welterweight that squeezed down to the 130 division, then 135 and 140. When he reached 140, his knockout started to increase because he had more strength, because he wasn't starving himself. But they call an eight Earl a weight bully. Come on, man. This is where y'all gotta see. Y'all push the narrative for the next man. He got in the ring with Jose Benavidez. Jose Benavidez was his size and was working him, but had one leg, a gunshot victim. This man was fresh off a gunshot beating on Bud. And he said he wants to fight this year. He wanted to fight this year. The man had the contract way back in June, July. That's a whole six months he sat there wasting it, asking for the same thing that he asked for on the first contract. No, what it was, was Bud was looking for an easy paycheck. He was using the double dealing because he had been talking with B.O.K. since way back then to fight a fighter that he wanted to fight a long time ago, which was David Avenizia. 
Bud likes to fight easy fights. Bob Aaron had to twist his arm to get him to fight Mean Machine, and you see Mean Machine knocked him down. You see, he didn't want to fight Sean Porter unless he was damn mandatory to do it. Bud likes to fight his mandatories, and Bud is used to getting guaranteed paper. Bud is not used to being on his own and being a boss. He's going to always be a worker. He has a worker's mentality. Just because you're getting paid, that doesn't mean you're a boss. Because somebody's getting paid more than you. That's what Don King used to do. This is what they do in the music industry. They get a fighter to sign for upfront money, and they get the back end. And that's what Bud's been giving up all this time is the back end, and he doesn't realize it. That's why Al Heyman said, why would you want to cap yourself when he had the hedge fund, so-called, for the $50 million for the fight? So if the fight did six, 600 pay-per-view buys and did over $100 million, all they would have got was 50. Why you cap yourself? You don't put limits on yourself. That's what's called being a boss. But he was happy about that $25 million because he's never had that much money in his life. And that would have been the biggest, that would have been four times more than he's ever been paid for, for a fight. And that's what he was salty about. And for real, for real, if Earl moves on for this fight, we can't even be wrong for it because he's done made the man sit out for a year. And people talking about, oh, the PBC ain't put on no fights this year, their budget messed up. No. If you listen to all the fighters, everybody was sitting back seeing what Terrence Crawford was going to do because this is the biggest fight. And they didn't want to make no guarantees or give up no venues until they see what Terrence Crawford was going to do. What he did was hold up the whole boxing division PDC schedule. If you see, after they found out that Terrence Crawford fight wasn't happening, they got fights on back to back to back to back. Yeah, they came out with five fights after they found out that the Terrence Crawford fiasco. So we can't put it on they didn't have no money. What they did was they put their faith in a bum and the bum flew off and ducked on them. And another reason, the final reason we know that Bud didn't want this fight, before the fight came, he kept screaming that he just wanted to get this fight in, then him and Earl gonna get back into the fight. First thing Bud hollered after the end of the fight was about to go back to the table, he don't know what's going on. If you knew you wanted the Earl fight, you should have said Earl Spence, that's it. Ain't nothing else but Earl Spence. If you agreed to everything that was on the table, you should have signed it. It ain't no reason about it. And now you done messed up your price because dude, you sold less than 5,000. You sold around 27 to 3,300 pay-per-view buys. YouTube videos get more views than that, man. Your fight produced what a YouTube viewership does on a platform that doesn't have but a thousand followers. So, man, you tanked. You tanked. So, if you and the Boston guys are happy, Earl and them can give you something, you can negotiate it and, and accept it and be gracious about it because you literally messed up the bag. And yes, this is the biggest fight, but not for anything that you did because black fight fan hyped y'all up. You is a whole hype job. Earl did all the heavy lifting, all the hard fights. All you sat there and did was watch. You and him have the same amount of fights and he was in a car accident in the last five years. He's been out the ring for almost two and a half years and y'all have the same amount of fights in the last five years. Come on, man, that speaks a lot and it speaks volumes. And you got these narrators and these people that you pay running around here painting a fault narrative, but we all see what's true. And yeah, even if you do make the Hall of Fame, you won't be a first ballot. And remember this, Jermaine Taylor was undisputed. He didn't make it either. Your career is built off ducks. You never had a 50-50 fight. You don't even have no fight that people want to watch over or have memorable fights. Most fighters have fights that you can watch over and over. You have none, bud. And Earl, shout out, keep doing what you're doing. And if you don't fight that bum, man, it's okay because you got bigger fights. Virgil Ortiz, Canelo Alvarez, Jamil Charlie, you got fights. The world is your ocean. You the big fish, man. The Megalodon. Do what you do.